Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Cindy McLeod, and I'm the seat. Can we start over? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I screwed that up. I'm not the CEO today. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Cindy McLeod, and I'm the chair of the board of University Canada West in Vancouver. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge today that we're on the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. The people of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation have lived on this territory for millennia. Their culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. The city of Ottawa honors the people and the land of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. The city of Ottawa honors all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people and their valuable past and present contributions to this land. Dr. Bill Cool, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance today. Um, University Canada West is very pleased to announce the launch of Understanding Indigenous History, A Path Forward. The series aims to encourage Canadians of all ages to learn about the Indigenous history through powerful personal uh, uh, narratives and engage directly with the truth and conciliation. The six part series explores the oral history, a powerful uh, history of the origins of the indigenous peoples before the European settlers arrived on the land that become later on Canada. They also will be uh, looking at uh, the treaties and fur trade, the impact of assimilation, uh, leadership and governance within the First Nations communities, indigenous law, and the 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. Despite taking steps towards uh, reconciliation, Indigenous people in Canada continue to grapple with the enduring pr uh, presence of colonialism. A, as, as its legacy persists through systemic inequalities and ongoing cultural erosion, the lasting pain caused by historical events like the um, uh, residential schools and the 60s scoop serves as a reminder that colonialism is still affects indigenous peoples today in Canada. The past still in the present, and it is precisely why we need series like this, to educate and to address those unavoidable contradictions. Recognizing the importance of acknowledging our past Initiatives like this series are crucial to educate people about historical injustices working towards a fairer future. Our goal is to, in this series, is to promote understanding and awareness, not only for others, but also for ourselves. It is our hope that um, this series will be a captivating, which has been my experience, and informative. And we invite uh, other institutions in the sector to join us in promoting this initiative. I would now invite uh, Philip Fontaine, or Phil Fontaine. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's a uh, a real honor to be here uh, before you to speak about um, a very important undertaking uh, being sponsored by U University of Canada West. It's been very much a continuation of the journey we've been on our lands here for thousands of years. The difference is um, compared to the first part of the journey to where we are now, is that we are 
being offered an opportunity as the First Peoples to tell our story and how our story is intertwined with the rest of the country and that our story is about all of us, Canadians and the, and the First Peoples. And uh, what is of critical importance is that it's a truthful story. It uh, covers all of what has befallen our people, all, all peoples, actually, Canadians and the First Peoples, and that uh, we are faced with enormous challenges to fix what has been wrong with Canada. And the single most uh, biggest challenge is that we want to correct the distortion of history that has existed for as long as settlers have been here and the settlers created their own systems of government uh, and the way governments have divvied up the powers that, that uh, govern our state. And in that process, they've ignored the very significant interest of the First Peoples. So this series is about making sure that Canadians know and understand much better than they, than they do now the true history of Canada and what it means to all Canadians. And we have to dig into the, the dark side, the dark chapter of Canadian history, which has been largely untold for, for years and years and years. And so this story, I mean, this undertaking has been an important challenge it's been stimulating. It's uh, enabled us to go back into the past, uh, including as, as an individual, but as also reflective of uh, the interest of, of all peoples. And uh, I'm certain that most that's, that witness the unfolding of the story that takes place in this uh, six-part series will stimulate other people to make a real effort to understand not just the country, but to understand themselves a lot better and how they fit into the grand scheme of life here in our shared uh, history and uh, a country that belongs not the two peoples, but all peoples. Right? It isn't just about French, and it isn't just about English. It's about the first peoples. And when we make a real effort to strike a balance in the stories that we tell during the uh, unfolding of uh, the, uh, the six episodes. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> um, I too am honored to, to be here. I think it's an exciting day. Uh, my name is Kathleen Mahoney. Um, I'm a professor of law. I've been so for too many years that I care to remember. Uh, now emeritus professor, but I have been an educator all my life. And I'm of the view that reconciliation, if it is to occur in this country, requires an investment. It requires an investment of time by Canadian citizens to learn about our country. And once that truth is understood, I think then reconciliation is not as difficult a project as one might think, because then citizens will know what they're reconciling. And this is what this uh, effort that we have participated in uh, with University Canada West and with the great Lisa Laflamme, um, this is what our intention uh, is in, in, in this work. Um, everybody pretty much knows some of the story now because of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but as uh, the Chief Commissioner said, education 
got us into this mess. And it's only education that will get us out of the mess. And the residential schools wasn't the only policy that had tremendous detrimental effects on the Indigenous population. There were many. There was the starvation policies, which were used to coerce First Nations and chiefs into signing treaties. There were peasant farmer policies, which were designed to take away equipment and good seeds and good land from Indigenous peoples because the settlers didn't like the competition. The Indigenous peoples were were better farmers. So the peasant policy required Indians only to have handheld instruments to farm and inferior agricultural implements. There was the 60 scoop policy. There was the foster care policy. There was the poor health policy. So there was many things that have resulted in intergenerational trauma, in poor health, in crisis situations that, were, that are, are today existing on First Nations across the country and in the broader Indigenous population. So as an educator, it's my view that this is crucial information. It's crucial information for citizens to take the time invest their time in finding out this information so that we can all proceed together as a country towards a place where we all want to be, which is what we think we are, which is a human rights respecting country where we value equality above all values, where where we think that we are superior to many other nations of the world, the indigenous peoples, fact of the matter is we're not necessarily that, but we can become that. But we can only become that through embracing the truth and proceeding to reconciliation, which I think and I hope that this series will help us achieve. So I thank University of Canada West for their vision, Um, Sheldon Levy and uh, his vision in starting this project. And uh, It's been an honor to work with it, and I hope it's a big success. I hope everybody watches the six episodes. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Laflamme, a longtime Canadian broadcast journalist. And again, such an honor for me to have been part of this extraordinary project to work with Phil and Kathleen, uh, to sit across from them. And as a journalist for so many years, time was always of the essence. Everything had to be told in a two minute news story. And, And this was, we had the luxury of time to look at our history, Indigenous history in this country, going back 300 years. And yes, we share the dark chapters, as Phil calls them. There are also an incredible number of Indigenous heroes, uh, resilient women that we so rarely talk about or even know about. I can say personally, These are not things I learned about in grade school or in high school. I recognize that the school system, thankfully, is changing now. There are more um, more on the curriculum when it comes to Indigenous education. That is not the case. And I think the beauty of this is that it's free on YouTube. And I love that University Canada West is making this available for all of us, for everybody who didn't learn it in school, newcomers to this country, people who want to know where they live and what is the backstory of this country we call Canada, who were the first peoples, what they brought here, what we've learned from them. And and I always, always believe that durable change only comes with public awareness and public education. So again, it is an honor for me to have been part of what I see as this incredibly Um, valuable opportunity to just sit back and listen to these six episodes through Phil's perspective and Kathleen's legal genius on where we came from and where we're going, because there is progress and we can't lose sight of that. So I hope everybody will uh, go to YouTube, uh, University of Canada West, and watch the six episodes, which will all be available online. Thanks very much. 
will now take uh, questions from Zoom. Uh, if you have a question, please use raise them function. Uh, Jesse, do you have a question? have question at this point if you would like to add something else we still a bit of <clears throat> anybody else uh, i want to ask, ask questions sure. it's okay um just to kind of stimulate some conversation if you, if you don't mind um oh. he's gonna ask no, you can, you can have so on behalf of University Canada West, uh, thank you to everyone for, for being with us today. We're extremely proud of the work that has been done with Phil, Kathleen, and Lisa, and our team at UCW as well. And as Lisa mentioned, we sincerely hope that educational institutions from K-12, to colleges, universities, and even business and industry across our country will take the opportunity to learn more about truth and reconciliation and the history of our Indigenous people in Canada. So thank you very much, and we hope that you will uh, enjoy the six-part series. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.